Hey everybody and welcome back to the now rebooted Lap of the World. I'm Richard and today I wanted to take a short dive down the rabbit hole into some of the how and why of trying to drive as many racetracks as I possibly can and visit a bunch of cool places along the way. So the light bulb moment for me with this project came three or four years ago as I was finishing an article about Potrero de las Funes, and excuse my bad Spanish, but that is a racetrack in Argentina that's built, and I'm not making this up, in the caldera of an extinct volcano. Oh, hey Richard, where were you last week? Oh no, we're just down in South America doing a track day inside a volcano. Reading about Potrero de los Funes really opened my eyes to the fact that there must be dozens, if not hundreds, of other obscure but incredibly interesting racetracks and equally obscure and incredibly interesting places in the world. And now I really want to visit all those places. Which leads me to the end game for Lap of the World, and that would be the stars aligning and driving literally every road course on the globe. Now, that's a goal of sufficient hyperbole that success in any degree would be epic. Uh, failure is highly likely, but if I get anywhere close, that's gonna be a hell of a trip. So let's talk about what's in scope for this adventure and a little bit about how we're gonna go about it. So that's gonna be road courses, road trips, and some self-imposed guidelines of sorts. Now I've said road courses a couple of times now, and that's because the racetracks I'm interested in have turns. Uh, and turns of both the left and the right variety. So for our purposes, drag strips and pure ovals are out. But an oval with an infield road course or a drag strip that can be configured into part of a road course, those are still a go. Now, why just road courses? Well. My reasons are both sentimental and practical. Sentimentally, I grew up watching road racing with my dad. Um, you know, old school IMSA, GTP, Group C, um, Formula One, of course, Grand Am. And of all of those, I always liked the sports cars and the prototypes the best. Uh, so as an adult, I'm kind of predisposed to owning sports cars and driving road courses. Now, from a practical standpoint, I don't, I don't even want to know how many drag strips and dirt tracks and, and small ovals there are across the United States, never mind the world. Um, you know, on top of that, the only track-ready car I own is a stock motor NSX, uh, <laughs> so it's really not going to be at home, we'll say, on a drag strip or an oval. And you can go ahead and cue your slow Honda jokes now. Speaking of my NSX, I want to play this game with my own car. With the understanding that it may not always be possible due to political, legal, or safety restrictions at certain tracks or events. Additionally, I want to drive the car to and from the tracks. I think covering the highway miles really both adds to the challenge as well as makes the game more approachable to anybody wanting to play from home. You don't need a trailer to go drive a racetrack. It isn't necessarily a bad idea, but if you see this car on a trailer, it's either broken, stolen, or I've done very well and I'm shipping it to Europe. Now. That's no knock against anybody who has a real race car and has to trailer it because it's not road legal, or the guy or gal who just enjoys showing up to the racetrack in an RV and backing their Ferrari challenge car out of the trailer and telling their personal mechanic where they'd like their tire pressures. That's all fine. I'm just doing my own thing here. Speaking of doing my own thing, I suppose I need to cover the who is this guy piece at some point. I don't like talking about myself, so bear with me a little bit. 
I think of myself as a normal guy, all things considered. Uh, you know, I'm a family man. I work an IT-ish job to pay the bills. I do play one video game uh, semi-professionally, and in my spare time, I enjoy board games and driving cars and now, of course, editing video. So about that driving cars part, because I have a feeling that's why many of you are here. Uh, I'm no professional by any stretch of the imagination, but I have a modest resume and I suppose it's worth mentioning. Um, I started out autocrossing back in 2006, and in that discipline I've won two uh, local class championships, but I've never attempted the trip to nationals. I started track driving around the same time, 2006, and I have something now like 40 events under my belt, which is an extremely modest number compared to a lot of people I know. Um, but on the track, I am certified as a NASA instructor with the Southeast region. I've also instructed a couple of events with Chen Motorsports as well. I also hold a NASA time trial license and have occasionally done well at an event there. All of that is to say, I'm not Lewis Hamilton or Seb Vettel, but I'm also not new to track days and track day logistics. So I think we're gonna stop there for today. Hopefully this hasn't been too long-winded and has given you some context around where I wanna go with Lap of the World as well as where I came from to get here. Now, next time we will actually get started in earnest with a video from back in the fall getting ready for uh, NS Expo and going to Road America. Uh, so that should be really fun. But in the meantime, I'm Richard, this is Lap of the World, and I'll see you in the next video, if not at the track.